welcome to Zimba Motoring. My name's Nez, and this is what it's like to live with a 2015 BMW Z4 S Drive M Sport 20i. So I've had this car since the end of January, and it's been nothing but fantastic. It's just four cars in one. It's a coupe, it's a convertible, it's a cruiser, and it's a sports car. It's just fantastic, especially with this hard top metal roof, which was one of the big points for me when I was buying this car. So this car, comes the two litre four cylinder engine producing 184 brake horsepower and 199 foot pounds of torque. It goes from 0 to 60 in 6.9 seconds and does 142 miles an hour. This car is turbocharged and is made to an eight speed ZF gearbox, but it's just the way it feels. I mean, ready? to it <laughs> Woo! I'm not sure if the noise is coming through but it sounds phenomenal I love this thing it makes every journey feel special hear the turbo whistle as well it's got that beautiful honestly I can't I can't pronounce it but it just again it adds to the whole character of the whole turbo car I mean yes it's a four-cylinder but it sounds fantastic the handling is brilliant really sharp, really agile, it's fantastic in the bends, it really wants to play, it feels alive in my hands. Because of the low slung driving position, because I'm sat right on the rear axle, I've got that beautiful view of the long bonnet, it's like I'm steering a nice boat, like a power boat. I've got that lovely, lovely long bonnet, oh, on a nice country road like this, it's so much fun. Sounds fantastic, this thing. <laughs> the downshifts. It, um, I don't know if it dumps fuel in the exhaust, it just pops. Right now, I'm in Sport Plus on a drive performance control unit. You've got three modes. You've got Comfort, Sport, and Sport Plus. So if I put it back into Comfort, steering wheel is fairly heavy, very lazy in response. Again, the same as the throttle response. And stability control. So you've got full traction control, which is on. Then when you move up to Sport mode, when you press that button immediately, I'm not sure if you can hear that, the revs shut up straight to 2,500 RPM. The steering feel is a lot, lot quicker. It's eager to go, you can feel it. I can feel a lot more instantly through the steering wheel. And throttle response, again, sharper. Stability program is about the same, but a little bit less intervening. Oh, and now you can start to hear in sport mode, you can hear the turbo whistle. <laughs> So now we're in Sport Plus. Gearbox is super responsive. Throttle response is at its sharpest. Steering feel is very light, very responsive. Automatically, traction control is off because it comes up on my dashboard. The stability program is at its least intervening. But this gearbox is a marvel. The ZF gearbox, super responsive. Listen to this. Third, second. First, 
just like that. Honestly, it's like a dual clutch. It's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. This gearbox is also it's great for performance and also good, great for fuel economy because when you're in a motorway or a dual carriageway, cruising at 60 miles an hour, go straight to eighth gear, seven or eight gear, cruising gears, and you're turning over 1500 RPM and the car is just saving fuel. It's the perfect gearbox for everyday driving because it just goes through the gears instantly. Very seamless and obviously when you're on it, downshift and they're very, very quick, they're very snappy. Um, honestly, there's no lag whatsoever. The ZF box is the, one of the best gearboxes I reviewed. And then 1355i, which, which has got the same gearbox and it's fantastic. So the engines, you have five available engines for the Z4, all turbocharged. You have three two litre four cylinder engines and two three litre six cylinder engines. Now the two litre engines, you've got the 18i, 20i, which is this one, and the 28i. Now the 20i is the middle of the range, which and it's renowned to be the sweetest car in the Z4 range in between the two litre engines. Now, obviously, the three-litre six-cylinder six engines are a lot more expensive. There's a massive price hike. This is considered to be the best of both worlds because it offers fantastic performance with great economy and yeah, fuel efficiency. So, the journalists have said, and the professionals, this is the best car in the two-litre range. It actually feels very quick. 6.9 seconds is quite conservative in my book. It actually feels quicker than that. To be honest now i know that doesn't sound a lot but honestly this car is turbocharged so you can play around with the turbo you know you can enjoy the whole sensation of boost building up now let's move on to refinement this car is hugely refined thanks to the metal folding hard top roof it's really really quiet in here as i'm sure we can tell and it makes for a fantastic daily driver and unlike its rivals like the audi tt the Mazda MX-5 and the Porsche Boxster, they all come with soft tops. This and the SLK come with hard tops. Now, I test drove the SLK, and in fairness, it was just as refined as this. And the benefits of a hard top, it's, it's absolutely quiet in here. It's refined, I can have a civilized conversation in here. There's no wind noise, and it's absolutely brilliant. Now, with the roof off, this car obviously comes with an option of a wind deflector, which I can't believe BMW charge you for a wind deflector in an open top sports car. But this car comes with wind deflector and the wind noise is, is absolutely fine in here. It's not too loud or noisy. The road noise is not too much. I know this car comes with run flats as standard and some have complained that it's a bit noisy, but to me per personally, it's fine. The road noise is, is not too loud. Let's get onto the interior. The interior of this car is one of my favourite points. It's really stylish, uh, it's modern, it's crisp. Um, it comes with this fantastic uh, Kansas leather. This is an M Sport, so it comes with sports seats as standard. I love BMW's leathers. Uh, I mean, you've got lovely soft leather, which feels like it will last uh, a long, long time. Uh, it smells brilliant in here. It's just a fantastic place to sit, really. BMW have done a great job with the interior of this car. Yeah, this car comes with a brilliant iDrive system, which is a big option uh, for this car. It's one of the factors that I looked for when I was going for uh, when I was looking for this car. It's funny enough, it was quite rare to find a car with the iDrive, but w when you get one, I highly recommend it. It's fantastic. So here's your, your center, your iDrive control unit here. So you've got your menu, CD multimedia system, Obviously, you can put a CD player there, or you can sync your phone. Uh, my phone's uh, connected to the car so by, via Bluetooth, so I can play anything on my on my on my playlist through the through the car. You got your radio, DAB radio, which is standard. You got your telephone. I can access my full phone book and call them immediately. So I can any of my contacts in my phone. Literally go through them, hold the button down, and it calls them straight away. And it comes through the speaker, so I never ever have to touch my phone. So you've got my phone book, last number read down. So instead of always having to constantly go and find the person, if I call them quite frequently, the car remembers that. So I can just go to last number read dial and I can find the person, bam. I don't have to go through the phone book system and find the person again. Or receive calls. So if you want to call back someone who's just called you, again, go to receive calls and just call them back straight away. Dial number, 
or if you haven't got the person's number on your phone book, you can literally just type the per, per, or enter the person's phone number on there. Messages, so if you've got voicemail messages, the car can read it out to you. Bluetooth telephone, straightforward. And that's that. Telephone, navigation. Now, the navigation system in this car is brilliant. So it's very, very clear, very concise. It's easy to read. Um, so you've got your guidance, you've got your spoken instructions, you've got your route criteria, points of interest. So if you're on your way down to a certain destination, but you wanna stop by a point of interest, or you wanna stop by a restaurant, or you wanna stop by a hotel overnight, you can literally connect that up. Traffic information, really handy. So if there's traffic ahead, or it warns you that, oh, by the way, up ahead, there's incoming traffic, do you wanna go divert, do you wanna divert your route, do you wanna go another route? The car's really handy in that uh, sense. And you've got your map views, and you can zoom in. The navigation also save your journeys, so your previous journeys, just find the postcode, bam. You don't have to go through the whole process again of starting again. Uh, so that's that done. And then you've got your office, so you can put your own contacts for solely for business and work purposes in the office section, so that you don't have to mix them up with your personal friends. Uh, so the office bit, very straightforward. Next is connect to drive. Now this car, again, this is an option. Uh, it comes with information plus. Uh, BMW Mobile Care, BMW Online, internet, so I can go live on the internet. You have to subscribe to it though, but internet, so you can go on Google, go on YouTube, do whatever you want. So you go on the internet, hotline, your service. If the car's due for a service, there's a number here, which is saved up already. So I can just literally write service, bam, call them, and service status. So that's connected drive for you. And then vehicle information, You've got onboard computer, which tells you your fuel range, how, how much uh, fuel you've got left, how many miles you've got left to do with that fuel. Uh, distance to destination, so once you, when you've got your sat-nav, it tells you how long you've got left to a destination. Arrival time, straightforward. Consumption, so, so far I've been averaging 27.1 miles per gallon. And your speed, your average speed. Journey computer, obviously tells you what you've done so far. So it tells me how long I've spent on a car since I've bought it. So 442 hours I've spent in this car since I've had it. I've covered that many mileage, my average consumption, miles per gallon, and my average speed. And then your vehicle status, which tells you your tire pressure monitoring system, your initial initial your tire pressures, engine oil levels, and when the next service is due. So pretty straightforward. And sorry, one last thing, uh, check control no fault so it tells you so the check control bits also tells you if the car is due a service or if there's anything wrong in the car it would then flags up and says please take it to your local BMW dealership and then last on the R drive is the settings uh, which obviously controls the whole system so the control display if you want to control the brightness or change the brightness change the time and date uh, language tone speed so if I'm going abroad I want to change my speed to kilometers an hour change it there your lights, door locks, so once I leave the car for two minutes, the car automatically locks, and software update. So if there's a later software from BMW, it updates the software. So that's the iDrive system, guys. It's absolutely brilliant. I highly recommend it. If you're looking at a Z4 or any BMW, in fact, iDrive is absolutely brilliant. Let's get on to visibility. Visibility was one thing I was worried about before I bought this car. Uh, Obviously, when I read reviews and when I actually went to test drive the car, it was fairly intimidating because of the long bonnet. It's like really hard to see where the front ends. But honestly, once you get used to it, it's fantastic. When it comes to blind spots, because it comes with quite narrow pillars because of the glass screen, I can see all four, all four corners of the car. Uh, when it comes to parking, this car comes with parking sensors, which I highly recommend if you're going for a Z4 which just makes it a lot, lot easier because it's hard to see where the bonnet finishes, especially when you're parking and trying to move out of tight spots. So perfect examples here. I need to flip around here, quickly turn. Now there's a curb up there. I don't know how far the curb is, but it's fairly good. Turning circle, turning radius is very, very good. Now, let me demonstrate one of the troubles sometimes with this car whilst on the subject of visibility. So, I need to make a U-turn. Now, because of the long bonnet, I don't know where the front finishes. So, this is why you should have parking sensors on your Z4. Parking sensors, now it's telling me already where the curb is, 
right here. So put it put it in reverse. This is the issue sometimes with with the long bonnet. I can't really see. Perfect. That was telling me where that ends. No, I can't see where the front finishes, but I can rely on my sensors. Yep, there we go. So coming out of tight spaces can be a bit tricky if you haven't got sensors. Thank you very much. So yeah, as long as you've got your sensors, maneuverability is, is easy, it's fine, you'll be fine. Now let's get into the topic of build quality. Now BMW obviously is a German brand and as you expected, build quality is fantastic. I've had this car since the end of January and touch wood, nothing's really gone wrong. Everything still feels solid, there's no rattles. It's just a well-built machine. Uh, the leather is really holding up well. Um, everything still feels tight and obviously this car is used, it's not a brand new car, but it feels exactly like when it left the factory. The build quality is absolutely fantastic, as you would expect from a German uh, car company. The steering wheel is holding up fantastically well, there's no major wear and tear. The seats, again, uh, they're not wearing at all. Um, it, every, the doors are in the closest doors, you still get that nice, reassuring thump, like boom. I'm not sure how they hold up if they're five, six, seven years old, but this car is about two years old. Uh, a year old in fact sorry uh or coming up to two years old so roof uh is is i do worry a bit you know because it's quite fiddly but the roof is still going well it's a great place to sit um everything feels fantastic in your hands especially the hard drive the gear lever window switches when you put them down you've got that nice satisfying click or when you put the handbrake lever up you got this just little things you know little things at the touch that feel brilliant when you put a car in gear or when you put it in drive or you put it in park and sport mode or even like little things like the paddles you know like bam bam you know i to put it into perspective i test drove an slk and the paddles i was really really disappointed the paddles are plastic and you would think on a sports car you know a steering wheel is think is something you always hold you know every time everywhere you got the steering wheel is the most important thing and to have plastic paddles, it just didn't feel lovely. It didn't feel nice to, for something that's I'm always going to be holding. Um, whereas this has got these lovely, lovely, lovely paddles where they're like cold at the touch and put them up and down. It's just, it just feels great in your hands. And, and even the steering wheel is like nice and thick. Uh, it's got a lovely thick rim and it's just, it's just great to hold in my hands. And, it's got a nice tiny steering wheel. Um, I've been in an M4 and the steering wheel feels big compared to this. Uh, this has just got a lovely, just great dimensions. The little buttons on the steering wheel to, to control the volume or to, to answer a phone call or to change my music tracks. It just feels so solid. The door bins, just that mechanism, just done. You know, it feels lovely. The cabin is stylish and, uh, you know, it's modern. I love this aluminium hexagonal carbon trim it goes to say though sometimes i get annoyed with this center console it's got that look i'm not sure you can hear that squeak now, i don't know if that's to do with the plastic or what but that's one thing that does get on my nerves at times but it depends on how you lean on it i suppose it's just plastic and yeah but that's the only annoyance to be honest let's move on to space and practicality Obviously, this car is a two-seat sports car. It's not going to be the most practical car in the world. But saying that, it does come with some great storage places. It's got these lovely door storage bins where you can fit a bottle of water in there. You can fit little bits in there. Uh, you've got your center armrest where you can put your drinks in there. It's got a little pouch. You can put your phone. You've got your glove box, which is great. And behind the seats, you've got this lovely little uh, storage compartment here with, with the netting, so you can put your umbrellas or jackets or anything there, or your sunglasses. And this car comes with the optional uh, load through facility, so that goes through to the rear boot, so you can, you can put more stuff in there. Uh, so you can put your skis in there and all the other stuff. But saying that, close that up. Uh, in the boot, the boot, once you have uh, the roof up, fantastic. You've got 
surprisingly a large amount of storage in there. I think I was reading it's got more storage space than the, um, than the rear of the Porsche Boxster. With the roof up, you can even fit uh, golf clubs widthways and uh, a few bags in there. So with the roof up, great storage space. But with the roof down, um, you can only probably fit one soft bag in there. Boot space is not the greatest with the roof down. Um, but to be honest, with a car like this, you're not buying it for practicality. You're not buying it to fit your <laughs> a lot of stuff in it. For me personally, um, I, it's fine. I don't carry a lot of stuff. Now, let's move on to running costs. So, to fill up the tank of this car would cost me 60 to 65 pounds. Uh, and that, if I'm driving economically and really carefully, uh, could last me up to two weeks. This car comes with a service pack, so fortunately I had to negotiate that in a deal. So servicing is covered. I'll come on to running costs and then a separate video uh, to show you what it's like to run a car like this. So, um, but running costs are generally, just generally okay. I mean, as I said before, this is the middle of the range. It's a two liter uh, four cylinder engine. So it gives you the best of both worlds. You get the performance and the fuel economy and fuel efficiency. So excluding the 18i, this car comes, the 20i upwards comes with a lot of stuff with standards. So it comes with DAB radio, it comes with dual zone climate control, it comes with automatic headlights, uh, rain sensing wipers. It does come with a lot of gear as standard, which is fantastic. So uh, if you're in the market for a Z4, uh, don't worry, you're fine. Apart from the wind deflector, which annoys me, which is an option, uh, it's fairly well equipped. So to operate the roof is uh, it's a fairly straightforward process. So there's a button here, which the roof down um, symbol. So you press it, hold it, the windows lower, and it's just like this roof, I figured out this car has the same roof system as a Ferrari California. So the rear window comes up on top and then that folds back down altogether. It's really theatrical and all of a sudden you've gone from a coupe to a roadster and it's just so much fun, especially on a day like this where the sun's out, it's just brilliant. So there you go, put the windows down with one button and it's a completely different car now. Um, so yeah, as you can see, it's <laughs> the smart, automatically you can hear the engine if I give it some revs, so you can hear the turbo. Yeah, it all suddenly becomes a different car, got a million miles of air and nothing else matters now, it's just you, the car and the road and yeah. Which is why I love this car, and I keep going back to the point that this car is four cars in one. This is the car key. You can uh, obviously you got your unlock, lock, and to open boot to operate the roof with the key. So if you're in a car park and you want to show off, or you have, you really just want to get going, just quickly whilst you're walking to the car, press the button, and the car opens the whole roof, uh, which is fantastic. Though you can't put the roof up though with the key, which is quite annoying. You have to actually go in the car, press the button to put the roof up. That's quite annoying, but it's quite cool, it's quite handy uh, if you're in a rush and you want to roof down. So, the startup procedure of the car. Here's the key. There's no conventional, it's not a keyless system where you just have to press the button. You actually have to slot the key within the keyboard. So if I slot it, the car wakes up, the sat-nav comes on, and you just foot on the brake, press the engine start-stop button, the car comes alive. To put the roof up, let me show you how to put the roof up. So again, you press the other button. Hold the button. First of all, the rear opens up wide, and then the whole both roofs come up. The first one slots into place. The rear hatch closes. The rear boot closes, and then the top half, the rear window, comes on top. It's honestly, I still don't get bored of it. It's just fantastic to look at. Uh, it's always quite fun opening the roof in traffic, as people are. How's that working? How, how the hell is that, is that roof opening? Uh, so it's always good fun. So guys, hope you enjoyed the video and uh, make sure you subscribe, like, share, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.